Shalom and blessings, warriors of Yahuwah and the truth. Today we are continuing on with Beguiled Eden to Armageddon, video number 15. Um, I got volume 2 before I got volume 1 because I read the title page, the pages, and I read the, um, the little bit of the book that they let you read to preview it. Um, the other books, they didn't have a preview, so that's why I didn't go with one of the other ones. Um, and Beastmark was only talking about what happens to, um, what is going on with uh, the pineal gland and um, uh, the uh, and, uh, Hashatan uh, attacking our seat of our soul in the pineal gland. Okay, so we are on water, water everywhere, but not a safe drop to drink. BP's oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico on April 20th, 2010, dumped between 2 and 3 million barrels of oil into the ocean for months and became the largest man-made cat catastrophe ever. A month before this spill was reported, hundreds of thousands of winged snails washed up dead on Pensacola Beach, Florida, without explanation. What was in the ocean that caused this massive death? Later, when oil began to leak, another huge number of marine animals perished even more. Once this oil leak was stopped, which, which, which took months with huge fissures forming in the ocean floor, BP representatives introduced oil-munching microbes into the ocean to assist in the efforts to clean up the mess. These officials stood before our government in Washington, D.C., declare, declaring by 2012 residue which would be gone from the Gulf waters. In late February and early March 2011, almost a year after the spill, the Gulf Sea floor was completely dead in that area. Carcasses of common marine life, which included starfish, tube worms, and crabs, were covered in oil on the seafloor. Even large amounts of methane from the BP's well leak were still present in water samples. Core exit 2500A and 2527A, used, used to help disperse oil, caused um, Louisiana's cleanup workers and fishermen helping BP minimize effects from the spill to experience symptoms of intense headaches, burning eyes, rashes, nausea, disorientation, and dizziness, as well as death. Uh, she's stuff for me, so. <sighs> Oil munching bacteria to rid the gulf required other nutrients in greater abundance for it to grow. These nutrients included fertilizers made of nitrogen or phosphorus. For fertilizers to work in open waters, they had to bind to the oil. Did BP mix core exit with fertilizer? If they did, this would explain why there were so many reports being made by people who were spotting planes spraying something over oil sites. The company supplying core exit claimed its total chemical makeup could not be revealed due to a trade secret. A trade secret, how convenient. Core exit might have broken up oil, but it fertilized a huge amount of bacteria at the same time. Boosting bacterial growth with fertilizer is not a good idea as the, these microbes have a dark side causing them to become toxic, which was revealed in volume one of the Beguiled series concerning dinoflagellates. These organisms attack marine life by producing neurotoxins like nerve gas and when airborne can kill everything in its path including humans. Swimming in the water, breathing air off the water, or eating seafood from contaminated areas can cause sickness. Symptoms of short-term memory loss, gastrointestinal problems, sores, rashes, and ulcers of the skin, as well as total aut autonom autonomic system dysfunction can occur in those exposed. Rashes. Hmm. It is very interesting that per personnel assisting BP's cleanup experienced those exact same symptoms. What really went on in the Gulf in an effort to quickly clean up has a track record that has already produced serious complications in other areas where fertilized dinoflagellates became toxic in the past. BP's total problem will be resolved will not be resolved anytime soon, if ever, because long-term consequences may be may have just begun as more deaths of animals as well as humans living along the Gulf Coast continues. In fact, fresh oil washed ashore in Louisiana again on March 21st, 2011, stretching 100 miles into the ocean with more dead fish floating in its path. This oil problem was quickly blamed on another platform leak, but no information was forthcoming. When Hurricane Lee hit the same area in late August 2011, its force revealed oil everywhere as thousands of tar balls hid beneath the sand surfaced. 
Then in late August 2012, Hurricane Isaac hit New Orleans and the ocean turned brown al along beaches with oil resurf resurfacing again. So much for what BP called their perfect cleanup. During December 2011, reports began to flourish concerning an exotic species of lionfish and tiger shrimp infiltrating the Gulf with potential to destroy native seafood by killing, consuming, or bringing in disease. According to a report released by Texas A&M, Texas there was a, an increase in non-native non species colonizing in Gulf waters at rapid speeds. Lionfish and black tiger shrimp are supposed to reside only in the Indian and Western Pacific Oceans, not the Gulf. Such predators of Gulf, wa of Gulf waters will only cause more havoc to the shrimping industry. Just how these non-native species got into the Gulf remains somewhat of a mystery. <clears throat> this report, or the report of giant shrimp from Asia and Australia, were noted in October 2011 as shrimpers began seeing more and more of them stretching from South Carolina's coast to down to Florida, and then finally into the Gulf. Along with all this, water safety began presenting problems. In December 2011, Louisiana health officials linked unsafe water used in neti pots to, con to cleanse sinus cavities with killing two people from a brain-eating amoeba. Wow. Officials warned tap water was okay to drink but should not be used in the nose. Still, one has to wonder just how serious contamination in drinking water is becoming. If you cannot wash your nose, is the same water really safe to drink? I don't think so. Red tides are increasing worldwide. These tides caused by microorganisms called K. brevis produce a neurotoxin affecting marine animals, birds, and humans. Symptoms from breathing its toxins cause severe respiratory conditions of wheezing, coughing, sneezing, and irritated eyes. Swimming in a red tide intensifies these adverse reactions, causing bronchitis and pneumonia to develop. High levels of such toxins produce disorientation and death. Clams, oysters, and other bottom marine life harbor, harbor these toxins and can cause neurotoxic shellfish poisoning, so they should not be consumed from an area near a red tide. K. brevis microorganisms gather in large areas to bloom coloring the sea red green brown or sticky clear man-made fertilizers are what give it nutri nutrients to grow and prolong its bloom on january 10th 2011 as far away as banks lake in new zealand officials were warning residents to steer clear of a toxic algae bloom called anab anabina or anabena manifesting in their lake not even boiling water, according to these officials, would remove this vir virulent toxin, which can kill those who eat, drink, or swim in it. Later, millions of anchovies washed up March 8, 2011 in Redondo Beach, California, and their deaths were blamed on suffocation due to a red tide algae bloom. Many other massive fish deaths occurred during escalating solar flares, as well as right before a series of record-breaking earthquakes in Japan. Was there more than a red tide at play? During Ju July 2011, toxic blue-green algae killed hogs in Brittany, France, which caused humans and larger, larger animals to become sick as toxins in the air produced by these algae is worse than cyanide poisoning. poisoning. On September 30th, 2011, a red tide of California's coast created a blue glow in the ocean's waves at night, in an extremely rare event blamed on algae being bioluminescent from a chemical actually called luciferin, which is a protein allowing deep sea creatures the ability to glow. This same type of blue glowing ocean also occurred in the late November 2012 at Malabar Beach in Sydney, Australia. Of even more significance was that during the same peri time period, Bondi Beach and several other in others in Sydney, Australia experienced ocean waters that turned bright red just like blood for days, giving off a dead fish smell. Earlier at, on July 5, 2012, mysterious red rain that also looked like blood red, fell from the sky for over 15 minutes at Kanner, Kerala in India. Is all this just a freak of nature, or is it scriptural prophecy being fulfilled right before our eyes? And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as, blo as the blood of a dead man, and every living soul died in the sea. Revelation 16.3 fish, fish deaths continued to escalate in oceans and lakes worldwide. 
During May 2011, over 800 tons of milkfish and tilapia died in Tail Lake, south of Manila, Philippines. This mass massive fish kill was quickly blamed on sudden temperature drop of, or oxygen depletion. But one has to wonder what was really going on as fish before their deaths were witnessed swimming in circles. Oh, wow. Some, something was affecting their internal compasses within their brains. At the same time, Tail Volcano had experienced 115 earthquakes in 24 hours compared to an average of 10 to 15 daily. The volcano's unrest began in April 2011. During July 2011, more than 100 ducks and chickens died of a strange illness in the Marshall Islands. These ducks and chickens literally flipped upside down and died. Their eyelids were swollen and they appeared to be dehydrated. A source for their massive deaths could not be determined by environmental specialists. Then December 14, 2011, thousands of migratory birds crash-landed in St. Georgia, Utah and were killed with another 2,000 injured. Officials tried to blame deaths of these birds on their mistaking parking lots as water because of storm clouds above city lights. <laughs> wow. These duck-like aquatic birds, known as grebes, G-R-E-B-E-S, uh, migrate south for winter and never have been known to do such a strange thing. There are a lot of things happening for the first time worldwide. During August 2011, Kivalina, a small Eskimo village in Alaska, reported orange matter floating on their harbor and washing ashore. With an oily sheen, when it rained, the same orange goop was found floating in rain buckets used for drinking water. This substance eventually dried on the ground, forming a powder. Coast Guard officials ruled it, ruled out it was man-made or a byproduct of petroleum. Some theories suggested it could be algae. But this did not explain how it appeared in rain rainwater buckets, which meant the goop had to have been airborne. In fact, the same substance was discovered in fresh water 40 miles inland. It was also seen 150 miles southeast of Kivalina on Buckland River, where creeks stemming from this river also were affected. Emmanuel Hignut, chemist for Anchorage's Department of Environmental Conservation Lab, called the substance a mystery. Later in the month, this orange substance was claimed to be an unknown species of fungal spores that produce rust. Was it toxic and where did it come from? No one knew because it was the first time it had ever been seen. Next time we will be reading Thin Ozone Layer and Storms produce, Producing Massive Flooding. And then Reports of Strange Pestilences. Oh, the one after Strange Pestilences is a lot longer, so that one will be a separate video. Um, that's Droughts and Fires Raging Worldwide. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed the lesson today. And now it's time to praise Yahuwah. Yahuwah is with me. Yahuwah is for me. Yahuwah is greater than all of these things. If Elohim is for me, then who can be against me? Um, sorry. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. No trap from the wicked shall prosper. No snare from the devil shall prosper. Yahoo knows who are his. Do your utmost to show yourself approved. Be not deceived by wolves in sheep's clothing. For in the last days there will be blasphemers and evildoers. I love you all with an everlasting love as our Abba Yahuwah and the Shamayim loves each and every one of us. Shalom and blessings, warriors of Yahuwah and the truth.